We were talking to Simon Hill a little earlier about the A-League. Phoenix going great guns. Only lost the one that was on the weekend. Sitting in third spot. Women going pretty damn well at the moment. The director of football for the new A-League Auckland side is a man called Terry McFlynn, who's a name synonymous with the A-League. He's a champion himself, and we warmly welcome him on to the show. Terry, thanks for joining us, mate. No problem. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you? That's a Northern Irish accent, all right, isn't it? <laughs> it sure is, yeah. But it's hard to shake off that one. Um, so, this is exciting news. This is, uh, and when Bill, Bill Foley appeared in Auckland just a uh, few weeks back, uh, full of vim and vigour and enthusiasm about this club starting. And you're his first appointment, or one of his first appointments, called the Director of Football. So, what is that role actually defined as? What do you do? Yeah, look, it's obviously a, um, a new club that's coming into the A-League and, like you said, it's a very exciting time for, for everyone involved uh, with the club and in football in general. Uh, you know, when I spoke to, to Bill about the role and, and his vision for the club and football in New Zealand as a whole, um, I was very excited by his passion and his enthusiasm for, for building something from the ground. So, yeah, look, it's, it's basically the football department um, uh, overseeing everything from... The A League Men's, A League Women's Academy down the track, um, staffing structure. Um, so yeah, there's a there's a lot to get done in a short space of time, but um, with a lot of good people in around the, the organisation at the minute, we're all pulling in the same direction. How many full time employees are working there at the moment? At the minute, there's three. Okay. Yeah, uh, but I think with Bill's obviously uh, the multi club ownership that the Bill uh, oversees and has got control of, there's a lot of resources in the background that, that's helping at the minute with football department, um, sports science, etc. So we're, we're tapping into all the resources globally at the minute that the Bill has given us access to. Terry, when's your deadline for things like announcing a coach? Um, look, we're fast-tracking a lot of stuff. So we've uh, conducted coach interviews uh, over the last week. We'll finish off. Uh, we've got one today, two tomorrow. Um, and then uh, we'll present a preferred candidate to uh, Bill later in the week and, and make a decision. Hopefully we can have that in place before Christmas. Um, January 1 is obviously a, uh, a top, day, top day deadline for us in terms of when we can and can't speak to players. Um, so obviously, as a player, you want to know who the coach is, you want to know what the vision of the club is, what the direction it's going. So for us, it's very important to have a coach in place um, to begin those conversations with the players and start the recruitment process from January 1. How many New Zealanders have you interviewed for the job? Uh, I think off the top of my head, four or five with okay. another couple to go. All right. Is it important to you that a New Zealand man coaches this team? I think, and Bill's been very vocal in, in saying this, that he wants to win. Um, I think it's very important that we have a New Zealand um, flavour to the whole club, um, right across the, the coaching department, the playing staff, everything. Um, but what we've, the remit that we've been given is to get the, the best people possible to bring success to Auckland and also people that want to connect with the community and, and get on the journey with us and, and really get behind the team. So, by all means, we will definitely be, if it's not the immediacy in terms of New Zealand coaches, we'll definitely be succession planning for the future to have a, a full New Zealand team and staff down the track. So it's it's more important, though, as far as this franchise is concerned, is to get it up, to get it running, to get it winning straight away. Yes, winning in, in the correct way um, with a long-term sustainable success plan, succession plan to have a New Zealand team um, uh, on and off the park. So... Uh, Bill's obviously had a lot of success, um, in particular with his ice hockey team in mm, Vegas. Yes. Um, so that's uh, one of the, the key things that he said himself in his uh, interviews was that really connected the community, and that's one thing that you know we'll be pushing hard and working with football New Zealand, working with the the clubs in and around Auckland in terms of genuine pathways, not only into the A League, but you know, as I said before, Bill's got the multi club ownership structure with pathways into three to four clubs in Europe, um, which is a great opportunity for all New Zealand players. How many players do you need to start an A-League franchise side? Uh, the roster is 23. Um, but you need a lot more than that, though. Yeah, well, look, we'll have, uh, obviously, with well, the scholarship positions that sit outside the cap, sit outside your roster as well. So um, it's important for us to get a right mixture of youth, experience, um, and that middle age group as well. So, you know, we've been uh, scouting and uh, watching a lot of uh, games from the under 17s, under 20s, under 23 national teams. Um, obviously, with the uh, under 23s going to Paris and uh, next year for the Olympics. Um, there's a great crop of players there, and um, obviously the All Whites doing a fantastic job at the minute as well. So, um, yeah, look, we'll be we'll be looking to bolster the squad out as as much as we possibly can.
How easy is it to do that right now? But, you know, because I, I should imagine that most players have got contracts, isn't it? So, and trying to break those and trying to entice them across. Yeah, look, there is a obviously with us coming coming in at the minute, um, we'll start preseason in July. Historically, contracts run till the 30th of June, so there is a list of players um, that are out of contract. They obviously become uh, the targets that, that want to. Uh, look at it in the immediacy and, and see who's a free agent um, come July 1 to, to start new contracts. There's obviously players across the world that um, aren't playing or aren't happy at, the, at their own club. Um, but again, that's not for us to, to initiate any of this type of conversation. We've got to be respectful of other clubs and other players around the world. So, um, yeah, look, we'll be looking at all um, players that are coming off contract um, as of 30 June 2024. Terry McFlynn is with us, Director of Football for the New A-League side. Do we know what the name is yet? No, we don't, um, and it's uh, it's something that's very exciting. Um, obviously, people within the organisation are working hard on that in the background. Um, so I'm not actually no, I don't like to know the name of the team myself. So I'm excited for that one, the same as everyone else. What about the colours? Uh, you know, what the team's going to wear? No, that hasn't been discussed yet either. Um, you know, we had a we had a discussion last week where we're where we're sort of sitting in the timeline of piecing everything together. So. That was very high on the agenda, obviously from a football department mm, mm. point of view, um, kit, equipment, footballs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, that you need to to start a football club from scratch. It's it's not easy. There's a lot to get done. So that's definitely very high on the list as well. In terms of players, I should have asked this couple of questions ago. I'm sorry, um, but in terms of hiring a marquee or signing a marquee player, because you know that you know Dwight York has obviously played the A League. I think he was around in, in your time. We've had Alessandro Del, Del Piero at times. We've had others, but just getting a big name like somebody like that, it's not a gimmick kind of thing, but it also draws fans in immediately and it creates a lot of attention. You get a lot of uh, press coverage and that from it. Has that been talked about? And is that a very real possibility? We've discussed everything. Um, you know, at the minute we're. They like say we're a startup uh, club, and as I said, we we don't have anything in the building as such. But we're looking at with everything. Um, we're looking at marquee players probably in twofold. There's a commercial marquee, which would be obviously, as you said, a big name that would attract fans and memberships and sponsorships. Um, and then there's a performance marquee, who might be a uh, not being disrespectful, but a lesser name, um, but comes in and, and does really well. Probably a middle age player does really well with the. The team, so um, yeah. Look for us. We're looking at all players in the cap, out of the cap, marquee players, designated players. Um, we just got to build a, a really strong squad that um, the community and the football people will get behind us and and see what we're trying to do. How do you make money, or is that not your department? Because there's no A League clubs that make money, and the league loses money. So I know that's a consideration for the owner, of course. But do you yeah. does that does that affect you, or how does that affect you? Oh, look, at the end of the day, we're in a, it, we all know it's a business. Um, so there's, there's multiple revenue streams across the business um, from sponsorships, commercial activities, corporate engagement, um, player sales. So that there's, there's definitely revenue streams across the business. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll, I think the more success you have, both on and off the park, there's more opportunity to, to become commercially viable and sustainable for a longer term. Terry, were you at Mount Smart a couple of weeks ago when the Phoenix did their double header? No, I wasn't. I wasn't across for that okay. one. Um, I'm, I'm only raising this because I've been around in Auckland long enough when we had the Football Kings and then we had the Football Knights and, and that was a great a great promotion that the Phoenix came up and staged both the men's and women's playing that double header. There's only 5,000 yep. paying spectators, which is a real worry. When you look at the Phoenix men's side, they might get five or 6,000 there in Wellington. The women get about 1,500 or something like that. They're not huge crowds. I know Auckland's got a big population, but it's got a massive football following here. Trying to coordinate all the clubs, so the people from those clubs and the petty rivalries and things like that, have you talked about that, and how do you go about that? Because you, you know, if you, if you get four or five thousand, it's 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 going to look inside that stadium very empty indeed. Yeah, look, we we have discussed that um, how we're going to engage with the community and and be be a present and be seen in the community and um, not just be a football club uh, within the community, but also be something that uh, is an extension of the people's lifestyle. Um, so we want to help around the community as much as we can in terms of other uh, aspects, whether that be coaching, education, whatever whatever it may be. Um, I think it's very important, you know, in the early days at, at Sydney FC, we were getting 25, 30,000 yes, yeah. people mm. uh, to games. And, you know, as a player back then, in, in those days, we did a lot of community engagement with local clubs, coaching clinics, um, hospitals, schools, anything where we could be present in the community and trying to make a difference. So I think that's something that's very, very important for us as a football club. 
and certainly from the owner that um, has been driven very hard that we really need to connect with the community and, and make sure that the people's on the journey with us. Well, it's exciting stuff, you know, for for us football fans here in the country to have you know a local derby going on. We've missed out on you know Auckland having a team in this league for you know must be yeah. well over a decade now. So. All the very best to you. All the very best of luck. And, you know, I think, you know, that most sports fans in this country, we love we love our franchises that are competing in the Australian leagues as well. It creates a real us versus them thing going on and and just hope that uh, it all comes together for you for the at the beginning of next season, mate. Yeah, lovely. Thank you very much for your time.